First of all, the Trinity teaches that there's one God, but that he is made up of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and that he has eternally existed as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and he always will eternally exist as these three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It says, was Jesus always a man? The answer is yes. Jesus was always a man. How do we know that? Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, yesterday and today and forever. Now in John 1, 1, we see in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jump down to verse 14. It says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus Christ did not begin to exist in Bethlehem's manger. Jesus Christ is from eternity past. He is, he was, and he is to come. The Bible says, But thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the prince of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel, which has nothing to do with the point I wanted to make. What's that other verse about Bethlehem? Uh, it says, Whose goings forth... In Micah 5.2, it talks about Bethlehem being the birthplace of Christ. And it says, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. So Jesus Christ is from everlasting. He had no beginning. He had no end. He's not a created being. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He was God made flesh. And what happened at the birth of Christ was that the Word was made flesh. The Word already existed in the beginning with God. But, you know, on exactly December 25th, 0 AD, just kidding, all right, don't, don't kill me after the service, but uh, Jesus Christ was the Word made flesh at that time. We don't know what day it was. First of all, in John chapter 1, the Bible reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, if somebody's going to say, well, how could he be both God and the Son of God? Well, then I would just point to this verse and say, well, how could the Word be with God and be God? I mean, it says in the beginning, the Word was with God and the Word was God. I mean, that right there boggles our mind a little bit. Yeah. Just as much as saying he's God and he's the Son of God. It says in verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God, meaning the Word. All things were made by him, the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. Verse number 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Now look at Luke chapter one, because the Bible tells us why Jesus is called the son of God. Why is he called the son of God? Because the Bible tells us that he is God. The Bible tells us he's God in the flesh. So why is he called the Son of God? Well, the Bible tells us right here in Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Let's start in verse 34 when Mary says unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? So the angel's telling her, you're going to give birth to the Son. And she's saying, I'm a virgin. I've not known man by lying with him. How am I going to have this Son? And the answer is given in verse 35. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now this is a verse in the Bible that gives us the answer to the question, why is he called the Son of God? Because it says, Therefore shall that holy thing which is born of thee be called the Son of God. So if you ask yourself the question, why is he called the Son of God? Here's the answer in this verse. Right. Yeah. And the answer is that he had no earthly father, but that he was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Right. That's why he's called the Son of God. So it's not that he's not God. The reason that he's called the Son of God is because when he lived on this earth, he was born of a virgin woman. So because there was no earthly father, you know, who's the father? Well, the Holy Ghost overshadowed her, and therefore that child was called the Son of God. So the fact that he's called the Son of God by virtue of the fact that he has no human father does not take away from the fact that he was God You're himself. Right.